warmer time, drought, grazing animals and fire maintain prairie as well as savanna and open woodland habitats. Today, we still have periodic drought. We still have grazing animals, bison notwithstanding. Fire, not so much. Oh, we burn our small prairie preserves once in a while, and we get some fires in uh, some of our woodland habitats, but we tend to burn at times we can control the fire rather than when fire can control woody encroachment. Consequently, have, we have chronic levels of woody encroachment in our oak woodland habitats, shading the ground there, interfering with oak regeneration, and reducing the overall size of our prairies and shading the ground in our prairies. The vast majority of the floristic diversity in these systems is contained in the herbaceous ground layer, comprised of sun-loving native perennial species, or SNAPs, if you will. Now, when you think about the interaction between these SNAPs and the overstory, with increasing woody encroachment, we can expect, uh, because of the lack of uh, shade tolerant replacement species to compensate for the loss of uh, shade and tolerant species, our expectations are, with increasing overstory cover or shade, we should have decreasing ground layer diversity. And these models depict that. In the middle here, we see at intermediate levels of woody encroachment, our expectations are in inverse relationship to uh, ground layer diversity. This, I, I take, is a signal of respiration potential. At the low and high levels of encroachment, we have these null models, which have no interaction. So a good place to test this is this North Chicago mitigation site, 160 acre a mosaic of native grassland heavily infested by shrubs. I've established a network of uh, stratified sampling plots across the site within which we collect data on the woody overstory and the ground our vegetation in 25 meter square plots. And in the middle of each plot, we take a canopy photo with a hemispherical lens, which then can be processed with uh, software to calculate percent canopy cover and its correlate, the leaf area index, with these data, the leaf area index is the preferred statistic for doing uh, analysis. And across the site, we have a wide range of canopy cover, from 94% canopy cover, where you can lose your graduate student pretty quickly if you don't keep track of it. <laughs> intermediate levels of encroachment, and all the way down to some more open stands, where there's a quite rich prairie flora still uh, persisting. Now, I've been doing floristic surveys at this site for a number of years and have recorded over 440 species of vascular plants, including four species listed as threatened by the State Endangered Species Protection Board. And they're shown here at the top. The four species, uh, three species on the right, show up quite regularly in uh, vegetation sample plots. And then some of these species across the bottom are some of the common snaps that we find across the site. Some useful definitions for understanding some of the terms here. Uh, species density is number of species per unit area, such as a quadrat. Richness is an overall count of species. Diversity is an index combining richness and evenness. And functional groups are groups of species with similar attributes, like growth form, life history, ecophysiology. Research questions, how do ground layer species and functional groups respond to increasing woody encroachment? Are there recognizable tipping points relevant to restoration potential? And are there functional groups associated with levels of woody encroachment that serve as ecological indicators? When we look at the influence of increasing woody encroachment here, represented by leaf area index, we see percent native cover declining quite rapidly as woody encroachment increases, leveling off at the high levels of woody encroachment. When we look at native species density, native species richness, we see this uh, inverse relationship in a linear form uh, between diversity and woody encroachment. This I take as a signal of respiration potential because there are species that are responding, albeit negatively, to increasing woody encroachment. Uh, native species diversity and functional group density is likely more promising. They show a little inertia to change, so, such that at about 70% canopy cover, then they start to decline. When we look at functional groups and the distribution according to the available light, the functional groups most associated, most affiliated with the most open parts of the stand are heavy parasites, warm season grasses, legumes, and perennial forbs. So, conclusion, species attrition pattern was detected. At least we don't have that novel model too, where there's no species left to respond. Um, diversity, as well as functional group density, demonstrate some resilience to early stages of woody encroachment. And heavy parasites, warm season grasses, legumes, and perennial forbs are the functional groups most associated with the lowest woody cover and likely first to decline with increasing woody encroachment. While there's no common tipping point, there remains significant restoration potential until the cover of 
shows that saplings exceeds 50 to 70% cover. Thank you.